I used to say to my students some um, months ago, I told them, they asked me the, uh, the question about the government. I told them, you know, there are a lot of Congos and each, each one of us abide in his own Congo. <laughs> they, they, they were kind of uh, uh, astonished. Each one abides in his own Congo. I said, okay, let me give you an example. Two people are, walk, are walking. In front of them, there are policemen who corrupt policemen who are taking money from people. And the, the first one says, says to the second, you see those policemen, they are corrupt people and they are going to ask us money. The other said, I don't see them. I don't see only children of God. And they eventually they arrive there. The first man is arrested. The second pass away without being even questioned by the police. Both people live in the same area, but they don't, they don't live in the same mental, mental states. So each one of us live in his own Africa. I see my Africa has an Africa of peace where people are awake to the fact that religion, their religion is a scientific one where people are awake to the, fast, to the fact that the white people are sons of God, so they cannot practice evil and we, uh, uh, without punishment. What they do, react against themselves. My Africa is Africa of prosperity, is Africa of peace, etc. The more I maintain this Africa in my consciousness, the more I will be living that Africa around me. Thank you so much. That is powerful. I love that. I really do. All right. Now, coming back to the beginning of the conversation, which is the unification of African traditional religion. Why do you think there is a necessity to do that? From, from the 19th centuries, how ancestors like Webb Du Bois have devised what they call Pan-Africanism. They say that Africa must be united. In order to become strong, we must be united. We must have one army, one government, and we will be powerful. And from the time, from that time, they have been looking ways to bring unity, the unity of Africa. Sheikh Antadiop, in one of his book, stresses that that unity must be first cultural. But when we look at Africa, what we see is a diversity of culture. So how to bring the unity of Africa, which is dearly sought by the politicians, which, did, which is dearly sought for the might of Africa. And we have, thought, we have, we came to the conclusion that the former unity of Africa during the Kemetic time, during the time of Egypt, was built around the religion which was scientific. So the same religion has been revealed today, thanks to the Kemetic cosmological argument, to be a science. So through that science, that exact science, we can, the, 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 the Igbo and the Bakongo and the Haitian can speak the same language, can understand that they are in the same religion and that religion is, is an exact science. So they were speaking one spiritual language and one spiritual language means a stronger unity, spiritual unity, and the spiritual unity will bring material unity. We will come to uh, Pan-Africanism as some other important conversation, but on another episode. For today, yes. <laughs> I want you to tell me, how are we supposed to approach this unification of Africa from a spiritual point of view or from a religious point of view, if you want to put it like that? Yes. We have, each one of us must make a re-lecture of his religion through the Kemetic cosmological argument. 
through the Bukongo, because the Bukongo has kept the former configuration, scientific configuration. I give you, I give you an example here. When I make a relecture of voodoo, I say witchcraft must be used as an exception for war. Witchcraft must not be used for retaliation. By doing this, I elevate the, the practice of voodoo to the practice of the scientific religion of ancient Egypt. So must do every one of us. We must reestablish the hierarchy of our divinities. We must, we must reestablish re the hierarchy. For example, if I take the Igbos of Nigeria, many will tell you that Chukwu and Chineke is the same being. But the Kemetic cosmological argument has revealed to us that the Most High is different from the Creator. So if Chukwu is the Most High, then the creator must be Chineke, and there are two different beings. So we must make a relecture of our, of our spiritual cultures by using the, <clears throat> the scientific statement of that religion, which is the Kemetic cosmological argument, and, and which is also the book Congo. This is one uh, point. We must also know that the highest religion is the divine, which is the practice of purification, purification of thought. So we must elevate our practice of religion from the human to the divine. We must less and less use material expedient for our elevation and rely on the spiritual expedient, which is the purification of thinking. That's the way we have to do in order to bring that unity. The, the most we do this, the most also the practice that religion, because the divine practice of our religion is the practice of healing. By healing, I don't only mean healing of disease, healing of all that is inharmonious in society. So we, the more we will bring that practical import of our religion, we will eventually keep it, uh, catch the attention of the politicians. And they will help in order to implement the highest practice of initiation, which was practiced in ancient Egypt. Now, what we do, even me in Ziraloa, are only the first steps. But we need the cooperation in, in order to bring higher aspects of this. And let me give you an example. The, 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 I, I have two kinds of initiation, the first and the second. The first one in, introduces people to the world of the, of the initiate. And the second one, people, people become initiators. For that one, I, I, did, I did it in my house, and it took people one month to be initiated. But in the ancestral practice, they were spending nine months in the forest. Believe me, to do that, you need the cooperation of the states. This is where we are today in Africa in 2022. But African traditional uh, spirit, uh, form of spirituality is not even regarded in many of the cases. They are simply looked upon as witchcraft. Um, so with the presence of Islam and Christianity, which are the two religions that are dominating Africa as we currently speak, how are we able to uh, succeed in this unification of African religion? Without, what, do you, what do we intend to do with these two um, dominant religious systems, which of course came to Africa through domination and control of African people. Of course, many people don't know that this are be, these are the instruments that are being used against them. So how do we manage in this situation? We have to capitalize on the weak point of those two religions. All of them three. 
Judaism, Hylum, and Christianity. We have to capitalize on their weak points. Their weak points are this one. First, first, first of all, their religion is only a belief. That is how religion is defined in the Western dictionary. And that's how religion is conceived in the West. It is a belief, a set of beliefs to which people cling with faith. We have to capitalize on that because ours is a scientific religion, an exact science. So it is superior. Belief, science is superior to belief. So you have, we have to awake to that scientific nature of our religion. Second thing, we have to capitalize on the fact that their concept of God imply a non-existent God. The, high, the most high creator doesn't exist. And we can prove this. We have, I have proved, proved, proven this through the committee cosmological argument. And we have to stand on this and show to them that ours is a superior kind of theism and yours is a lower one. We have also, because when people, when, when the, those white folks look at our culture, they try all the best to de de depict that culture has been akin to witchcraft. So we must do our best to quit using witchcraft as a mean of retaliation. Witchcraft must be sought by law. But let me add something on the epistemological level. There is something to be done also on the epistemological level, how our conception of knowledge. Knowledge in the West, the science of the West, is based on a belief, not on a truth. It is based on the belief that reality is material. Now, not a single scholar in Europe in America has where can prove to you that reality is material. They only assume that it is material. But thanks to the cosmological argument, chemical cosmological argument, I have proven, we can prove that reality is spiritual. Now, in most in when the white people arrived here in Africa, we had a superiority in them in many areas. For example, in the area of surgery. We knew how to practice surgery without, without suffering. We knew how to open the skull. We knew how to practice cesarean and, and take away the baby. And we knew how to pull the, 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 the aching tooth without suffering. We knew all that. But the problem is that our science, our technology are based on the truth that reality is spiritual. It is based on the existence of the spirits. We didn't have the means to defend that. Today we have that means. Today, we have the chemical cosmological argument. So we have to do what the Chinese did. The Chinese went to the WHO, the World Health Organization, and they said to them, acupuncture is our medicine. It is provable through our anatomy. And today, the WHO has admitted that medicine for more than, more than 50 kind of disease. We have to do the same for our technology and tell to the who our science is based on the demonstrable truth that reality is spiritual. You say that reality is material. Can you prove this? They cannot prove that. And because they cannot prove, they cannot stop us from by saying that it is not scientific. Ours is more scientific than they. Our technology is more scientific than the technology. Thank you for that. Those are deep thoughts. Now, what will be your final thought here in this conversation, at least for this episode, that we are going to have another, another conversation next time? What would be your final thought here today? My final thought is this one. In the ancient world, the Egyptian, 
the Nubian, the Ethiopian, they were spiritually united as one. Whenever trouble happens in Egypt, the Ethiopian army will go and reestablish order. They did it with Akhenaten. They did it many times. They were one spiritually. Unity of spiritual unit was with their strength. Within Egypt, there were many schools of spirituality, many theologies that they were seen as complementary. So inward, there was also a unity. That unity of yestertime should awake us to work for the unity of today. This is possible because in its original trend, African traditional religion is an exact science. We have proven this. We have the tool to prove this. We have a religion that has kept that scientific configuration. It is the Congo religion, the Congo. So please, let us make a relecture of our different trends, of the different trends of that religion in order to bring our unity around the notion of the scientific nature of our religious epistem. Thanks so much. We have to work for the unity of Africa, and the unity of Africa must be, first of all, a spiritual unity. I thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. I really appreciate the conversation. I learned a lot of things uh, from you today. And like I said, this is not the end. This is just one part of it. Thank you so yes. much, sir. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm ready. If you want to meet me, I'm ready any, anytime you want. Thank you. Thank you, sir.